Okay, well, I guess um, we can go and get started. So, hello, everybody. Um, I'm glad to introduce Chang Chi Tong as our speaker today. Um, Chang Chi is a research scientist at the Center for Analysis and Prediction of Storms at the University of Oklahoma, where he works on modeling and data simulation techniques. Um, Chang Chi has collaborated with us as a visitor at the Developmental Testbed Center since last April. And that included an, an in-person visit in October, which was really great to have. And um, today he's going to um, present on his D DTC project, which is for a GSI-based multi-scale data simulation system um, for, for convection allowing models. So, and after that, we'll have a little bit of time for questions. So, Chang-Chi, um, please feel free to take it away. OK, thank you for your introduction. Hi, uh, this is Chong Chi Tong uh, from uh, CAPS, uh, the Center, uh, Center for Analysis and Prediction of Storm at the University of Oklahoma. Uh, this is my uh, the title of my presentation today, uh, Development and Evaluation of a GSI-based multi-scale ENKF system for convection allow, allowing FV3 limited area model. Uh, here is my uh, colleagues at both CAPS and the DTC, uh, I would like to thank too. So uh, here is the outline of the presentation today. Um, at first, I will introduce uh, the, the idea of multi-scale DA and, and our motivation, why is the multi-scale uh, DA is important. And then I will uh, go into the methodology of our uh, multi-scale ENKF we proposed uh, about the uh, formulations of it. And then I will present the op uh, opt some optimizations we have done for the, the MDA me method. Then uh, I will show some real case application of our MDA and show some comparison with the uh, traditional, the regular single scale uh, ENKF. Then I will give you summary and some inclusion of my study. Uh, here is the introduction. So the initial uh, initial conditions that accurately uh, represent atmospheric state at all scale are key for accurate numeric NWP uh, down to convective scales, especially for the system involving multi-scale interactions, which we know many weather systems, they have the multi-scale interactions among the scales. So, uh, and given the utilization of the unified forecasting system, uh, which is the FD3 uh, dynamic core for a broad range of spatial and temporal scale by the uh, NWS in the US, uh, DS system, uh, which is capable of effectively assimilating all observations sampling uh, from synaptic through the convective scale for balance NWP IC is important for improving the forecast for longer time range, like up to days. So the main goal of this study is actually to develop uh, such a multi-scale DA system within the GSI ENCAP framework uh, for the continent-sized uh, convection allowing model resolution of the three kilometers uh, specifically domain aiming on uh, our final goal is uh, aiming on the operational impl implementation in the uh, upcoming REFS system. So uh, here is the methodology of the multi-scale ENKF. So I show it like step by step. So it's, it, uh, our e multi-scale ENKF is realized in a sequential manner. Uh, so the original ensemble background is first smoothed using the Lanczo's low pass filter to remove the small scale perturbations uh, from the background. Then the filtered background uh, is used to provide low noise co covariance in the ENKF system along with the relatively large localization ready to assimilate the conventional observation, which we believe will sample the synaptic scale uh, features of the atmosphere. So here is our uh, formulation of the uh, proposed large scale ENKF. So as I said, this is uh, in the uh, GSI ENKF framework, which used the ensemble square root filter proposed by uh, Whitaker and Hamel 
So uh, here is basically our uh, the formula for our update for the both ensemble mean update and ensemble perturbation update. Uh, the main difference of our uh, multi-scale ENKF uh, from the original ENKF is that uh, this common game here, uh, the difference is mainly uh, marked by these red colors. So these are the difference from the uh, from uh, between our uh, multi-scale ENKF with the original uh, single-scale ENKF is the common game. Mainly, our common game uh, is constructed uh, by the perturbation that's smoothed by the filtering uh, from the uh, first step. So, like here, uh, the one with the uh, tilt hat, that means it's smoothed. It's not in the full scale or uh, full original scale. It's actually smoothed. So like this background arrow covariance is actually smoothed. And here also for the ensemble perturbation update, uh, this factor alpha here uh, is also using the smooth background arrow covariance as uh, shown here. So then after we assimilate the conventional observation with this uh, smooth, uh, smooth common game, then these, uh, uh, the analysis of these conventional observation DA, it will be used to further assimilate the radar data, which we know uh, repre uh, will sample the small scale to like storm scale features. So uh, in this step, we will use a relatively shorter uh, localization lens, typical of the radar DA on the convec uh, convective scale grids. Um, then here I will introduce uh, the FD3 uh, limit area model, the LAMS we used for our uh, this study. So the FD3 model version I, I've been used uh, currently is still using the uh, GSL de developed branch, uh, which is updated from October 2020. And the domain is the kana size domain as shown in this feature. Uh, this uh, shading area is our kana FV3 domain uh, with these many of uh, uh, grid points uh, hor in horizontal. Uh, it's about three kilometers because we are using the GFDL grid, which is not a regular sized grid as the most current uh, ESG grid. So it's, as you can see, the shading represents the uh, grid spacing. Uh, so you can see that in the middle, in the center of the domain, it actually is, uh, has closer uh, grid point. And in the edge, uh, the boundary, actually the resolution is higher. Uh, the, at the vertical level, we are using 64 level hybrid coordinate with the model top at a 0.2 uh, millibar high. And the model physics we are using is uh, relatively uh, consistent with what has been uh, proposed for the REFs. So we are using uh, microphysics. We are using Thomson scheme, uh, two moment scheme, and the PBL is um, MYNN scheme and the RRTMG radiation scheme with the NOAA land surface model. Uh, so here. I would like to introduce first the filtering of the smooth background arrow covariance for the large scale DA. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, a length closed low pass filter will be applied to the ensemble background uh, before assimilating conventional data that sample relatively large scale perturbations. So the variables filtered and updated in this step uh, uh, by the conventional data will include the uh, uh, pressure. Uh, these are the variables uh, used by the FD3. So the, uh, in the FD3 is delta P. So it's pressure, uh, UV wind component, temperature, and humidity. So for assimilating conventional data, we don't update those like hydrometers or the vertical velocity, the W, because those are uh, like more small scale uh, character like variables. So uh, with conventional data, we don't update those variables. So at first we tried, uh, our first attempt is uh, we tried a relatively large uh, filtering lens to like uh, visualize, better visualize the effect of our filtering. 
So uh, we are using, and at first we using different uh, filtering for uh, simulating uh, different types of conventional data. The first is the upper air conventional uh, data, which including the sounding and the VAD. So uh, for this part, we are using 240 kilometers, a longer filtering length, as we believe that uh, these kind of data represent uh, like more large to synapse synaptic scale features. And for the surface observations, uh, we are using a little bit shorter, 60 kilometers filtering lens. So here shows uh, the analysis increment of the uh, U-wing at the fifth model level above the ground. Uh, for the first pass is the assimilation of the upper air data with the longer filtering lens. Uh, the second pass is use a uh, assimilation, the surface observation with 6T filtering lens. And this is the final analysis, which is uh, the, the analysis increment of the total. So as you can see here, uh, the upper row represent uh, is the control experiment, which use the single scale ENKF and the lower rows is our MDA ENKF uh, with the filtering background. As you can see, the increment uh, analysis increment pattern are similar uh, in both uh, control and MDA, except for that the MDA's increment is much more smoother compared to the control, uh, where it shows a lot of fine scale features uh, in the analysis increment. Uh, this is uh, just like what we expect since we're using a, a smooth background. Uh, to provide the common game. So the uh, analysis increment obtained from this uh, method will be much more smoother. And quantitatively, we see that uh, with the smoother uh, background error covariance, we uh, tend to obtain the increment with smaller uh, in the magnitude compared to the control. Like uh, the extreme value is uh, higher than the MBA analysis increment. Um, this case is uh, 2019, May 20. Uh, this is a uh, code from induced MCS case. So there is a code from located around this area, around the panhandle across the Oklahoma, uh, New Mexico here. So you can, as you can see from the first pass that assimilate the up air uh, soundings, uh, the correction of the ENKF gives you like colder correction uh, in the cold area. Uh, I mean, behind the cold front and in front of the cold front, it's a warm uh, correction. So this basically shows the location of the uh, cold front. Uh, but as, as you can see that with a much, smooth, uh, much smoother background, uh, the MDA tends to have a uh, displacement of the correction, like in the uh, North Texas Panhandle area. Uh, in the control, it does show the uh, minus, the code correction, uh, I mean, negative correction. While here, uh, with the smoother background, it shows the positive. So uh, this uh, kind of correction is improper uh, in cor uh, corresponding to the location of the cold front. So in the second pass, you can see that here are some blue correction, which is uh, it's kind of compensating corrections uh, from the uh, surface observation DA uh, to compensate the incorrect uh, correction of the uh, first pass with the sounding data. And it ends up with a relatively comparable uh, correction. So uh, from this case, we can see that uh, the large uh, filtering lens can be problematic because uh, when it is too uh, large, then you will, uh, there will be some uh, problematic correction uh, and making some like uh, the analysis update displacements. So we are from this sample, we are thinking of uh, to reduce these uh, uh, filtering lens a little bit for our uh, further experiment. So like in this area I was talking about. 
So then this is the filtering for the smooth background error covariance for large scale DA. Again, uh, the here shows the power spectrum of the analysis increment, uh, which is shown earlier here uh, as a function of the web, uh, wavelengths. So like in the first pass, again, this is the sounding and the VAD, the upper air observation. And the second pass is surface observation DA. And the third pass is the radar DA, uh, which we basically don't uh, make difference between the control and the MDA. They are using the full scale. Uh, just the, the, for these two, uh, the control and the, the MDA using the different uh, uh, background. So like uh, here, what's shown here, you can see the uh, clear, see that the uh, power dropped at the, uh, like this lens is about 150 kilometers. Uh, you can see the MDA's uh, power uh, significantly dropped at here, uh, corresponding to the uh, 240 kilometer filtering lens we used. And for the second pass, uh, we do see that uh, with a shorter background filtering lens, the the drop, uh, the scale where the signal drops is smaller. It's around like 40 kilometers here. And these are uh, the the, uh, the web lens that drops, uh, the power drop is co uh, consistent with the response function of the low pass length loss filtering showing here. So this is when we are using 240 uh, filtering lens, this is the response uh, function of that. Uh, you can see the total truncation of the signal will be at 150 kilometer, which is corresponding to the wavelength here. And when uh, we're using 6T filtering lens, this is the uh, response function and the total truncation uh, wavelength is at 40 kilometer, which is which is consistent with uh, what's shown here. So um, this, uh, the total increment is basically uh, dominated, uh, determined by the first two paths. As you can see that the uh, difference in the radar is relatively smaller because we are using uh, both the same background, full scale background for both control and MDA here. And also the magnitude of the power is, is much smaller uh, in the third pass compared to the uh, previous two pass. So this final total increment basically shows um, the, it consistent with the uh, first two pass analysis. Uh, then uh, we are uh, doing some case uh, experiment uh, to see the impact of different filtering lens scale. Uh, we try to optimize like what, uh, how long the filtering lens we should use to get like a uh, better uh, performance from the MDA. So here is the configuration. Uh, again, this is the case, the M uh, MCA's ca uh, case from May 21st, 2019. And here is the uh, DA configuration. Uh, we are using 40 GDAS ENKF analysis from 18Z uh, at 19 May. And we did a six hour ensemble spin up to 00Z and start to assimilate the conventional observation, uh, which includes the sounding VAD and surface data every three hour uh, with the three hour DA intervals until 00Z, May 21st. Then we launched 24 our deterministic forecast from the ensemble mean analysis of the final cycle. So two ex uh, three experiments are performed here. One is the control, which is a single scale ENKF with no, uh, no filtered uh, perturbations background. And the other two is are the MDA uh, that we try to see the impact of the filtering lens. So the number here uh, represents the filtering lens uh, in the unit of kilometer for the first pass, which is the upper air uh, assimil data assimilation. And the second uh, number is for the surface data uh, DA. So the, the first is 120 kilometer and 60 kilometer for the second pass. And for the other MDA, we're used much shorter, uh, like 30 kilometer and 30 kilometer for both convention, uh, both 
upper air and the surface delta. And here uh, is the uh, here shows the impact of like th these three different experiments. Uh, here, what's shown here is the 24-hour forecast. So we verified this uh, forecast hourly with the uh, conventional surface observations uh, for the three experiments here. So as you can see, uh, different panels shows the uh, different uh, verifi verification of different variables. Here, upper left is surface pressure. Uh, here's wind and temperature and the humidity. So as, as you can see that uh, for the surface pressure, uh, we do see like the significant uh, like improvement. Uh, the room square arrow, focus arrow is smaller uh, for the MDA 12060, but not in the later time. There is an exception that the MDA uh, with 12060 like uh, underperform the other experiment. But for like other experiment, we does see that consistent improvement of the MDA uh, 12060 compared to either control or MDA 3030 experiment. Like the focus arrow is smaller, especially for the temperature and the humidity prediction. Uh, it's kind of uh, relatively significant in these two variables. And uh, also you can see that uh, the MDA 3030 uh, experiment is somewhat uh, very, the performance is relatively closer to the control, uh, the gray one, uh, suggesting that uh, the adequate filtering is required uh, for effectively reducing noises and showing the positive impact of MDA. So uh, this is what we can expected seems the 3030 is kind of relatively short so it's much closer to the original uh, unfiltered background so the performance is relatively closer to the control too uh, the performance of mda with additional radar da so based on the earlier these uh experiments so we are choosing this um, one 2060 experiment, and we add the radar uh, data assimilation in the last cycle. So just one time uh, uh, additional radar data assimilation in the last cycle for the 120 experiment. Uh, here, what shows here is the dash line, the control and MDA, it's what's uh, shown earlier here for the gray and blue, which is excluding without the radar data. And the red line is uh, with additional one-time radar assimilation. So basically you can see that for most variables, uh, the include, inclusion of extra radar data uh, shows positive impact in the 24 hour forecast uh, in terms of the smaller focus arrow in most uh, variables and also uh, the, uh, the, the MDA compared to the black one, you can see that also the MDA has a, a better performance in the 24 hour forecast. In terms of the, uh, the ETS of the composite Z forecast, which is uh, basically the prediction of the storm uh, with different threshold, we also see the benefit of the MDA over the uh, black, which is the control. Uh, especially like for the smaller uh, threshold, which represents the uh, coverage of the storm area. Uh, you can see that the significant uh, outperformance, the higher ETS score compared to the black line. Uh, then also we uh, try to optimize optimize the background filtering strategy for the MDA. So here we propose the high dependent filtering. So this uh, idea, this concept of a high dependent filtering method is proposed uh, to enable assimilation of all conventional data at a single pass, uh, which uh, significantly reduce the computational uh, uh, cost of the entire procedure while uh, we also accounting for the uh, correlation at different spatial scale represented by different type of observation at different altitude. So uh, as we con we believe that the, uh, the horizontal spatial correlation scale of atmospheric state tends to increase with height. 
So we are uh, proposing this high dependent to use a, a shorter uh, filtering lens near the surface and uh, gradually increase with height, uh, then uh, use the consistent larger uh, for the upper air data. So uh, here is the filtering, uh, the high dependent filtering lens uh, we used for our study. At the surface, we are using 60 kilometers, then along with, uh, along with the height is gradually increasing to 120 kilometers. So uh, again, here shows the power spectrum of the temperature analysis increment on different model levels. So this uh, figure uh, here basically to show the effective, uh, uh, effectiveness of our uh, filtering, uh, high dependent filtering lens. So the three different lines shown here is the control that with no background filtering. Uh, blue one is the high consistent filtering with 120 kilometers. So along the whole uh, model layer, we are using 120 for this experiment. And the MDA high dependent experiment show, uh, is the one that used the high dependent filtering lens as shown here. So as you can see, uh, different panels represent different uh, level of the model. So the uh, model level one, which is basically the uh, surface, near the surface one, uh, we are using the much shorter uh, filtering lens for the M uh, MDA high dependent compared to the MDA. So you can see that uh, with the shorter filtering lens, the uh, power dropped at a, a shorter wavelengths as uh, go up to the higher model level, you can see that this uh, truncation, the, the, uh, the power drop uh, wavelength is getting closer and closer to the uh, 121, uh, the con constant filtering lens experiment, along with the height. And the things above uh, model level 21, we're using, or even for the uh, height dependent ex experiment, we are using uh, con constant uh, 120. So there is not much difference between uh, these two level. Then we look into the impact of this high dependent filtering on the MDA. So we are using just one time sounding uh, the upper air data uh, assimilation experiment to uh, show the uh, to examine the impact of the high dependent filtering proposed. Uh, so the experiment, again, the same case, uh, May 29 supercell storm is conducted with one time assimilation of upper air conventional observations. As you can see uh, here shows the 24 hour forecast rooming square uh, innovation verification against the sounding observation. Uh, just this one time assimilation with the uh, high dependent uh, so, sorry here, I didn't show it here. So the blue one is using the, uh, blue one is using the, actually the high dependent and the uh, black one is using the con constant, uh, constant filtering. So you can see that the blue line has the smaller uh, room square arrow across the different levels. And also in this, uh, when we, do the verification against the surface observations, you can see the, uh, the consistent outperformance of the uh, MDA with high dependent filtering lens outperforms throughout the uh, 24 hours. Uh, then uh, the other optimization that we're, uh, we have done uh, for the MDA is the post inflation for large scale DA. So as the key of the MDA uh, is to reduce noise in the small scale perturbation when assimilating large scale observations, a large scale RTPS method is developed to work accordingly with the MDA. So these large scale RTPS relax the analysis spread to the prior spread of large scale only instead of the original RTPS uh, that's available in the uh, GSI ENCAP is actually uh, relaxed back to the full scale original background. So uh, through this approach, we can avoid the restoration of small scale increment in the final analysis. So the three fig uh, figures shown here, uh, down here, 
is the temperature analysis increment at model level one. So here, we sh uh, what's shown here is actually a single temperature observation experiment. So basically, just to show the effective of our uh, large scale RTPS we propose. So on the most left hand side is the MDA, uh, the MDA analysis increment without any RTPS, as you can see. Uh, with the filtering background, you can see that the uh, smooth uh, analysis increment uh, patterns of this. But if we are applying the original RTPS that's available in the uh, in the GSI ENCAP that relaxed to the uh, original background, then you can see that small scale uh, features are reintroduced to the analysis increment, which is uh, what we don't want. So we, after we uh, using this large scale RTPS we propose, we ensure that the final patterns, uh, the after the inflation, the final analysis increment pattern is as smooth as the, uh, just the MDA result. Okay. Here is, then we are after this uh, optimization, uh, mentioned earlier. So we are uh, performing uh, this 12 hour cycled experiment. Uh, actually, we did a couple cases and here I'm showing the uh, May 21st, 2021 central plant storm clusters case here. And our configuration here is uh, we are using the uh, first 40 member of Cheetah's ENKF for, uh, forecast as our ensemble's uh, background. Uh, and we launch uh, three hour ensemble spin up to 12Z. Then we are uh, doing hourly DA throughout the uh, 12 hour cycle uh, DA windows here. Uh, the observation that's being assimilated, including the conventional uh, data, the uh, sounding data, and uh, MDA. I'm sorry, this, this is just a typo. So it's uh, including the sounding data, uh, the commercial aircraft data, uh, synoptic uh, data. Uh, this should be DAD, sorry. No, this DAD and uh, uh, synoptic uh, synapse data, metadata, and meso scale data for the first pass. So all conventionals uh, in the first pass, then uh, we assimilate the MRMS radar reflectivity for the second pass. Localization uh, lens that's been used. Uh, actually, we also apply the high dependent uh, horizontal localization, uh, which is 50, uh, no, 500 kilometer at the surface, increasing to the uh, 1,000 kilometer at uh, around seven millibar. Uh, these uh, transitions basically, uh, the, the layer of the transition here is basically consistent with uh, the high dependent background filtering lens shown here earlier. And for the vertical uh, uh, point two in the unit of log P, uh, it's used for conventional data and for radar DA, uh, the horizontal is 12 kilometer and the point four log P for the vertical. Uh, the experiment, we conducted four experiment, uh, one control and MDA with conventional only, and the other control and MDA with both conventional and radar DA for each cycle. So uh, what's shown here uh, okay, is the uh, forecast and analysis remit square in innovation and ensemble spread uh, during the 12 hour DA cycles uh, for different panels shows the different variables. This is the surface pressure, this is the wind. So different colors represent a uh, different experiment. The black one and blue one is the control and MDA without uh, the radar data, which is only conventional DA. Uh, the control red and the MDA red is actually the experiment that including uh, conventional with radar. So both conventional and radar data for these two experiments. So uh, what's shown here, uh, here for the surface pressure, so uh, for the analysis, assimilation, uh, assimilation of Z causes looser fit to the surface uh, uh, PS observation. Uh, the upper 
So the, the upper uh, zigzag plus is the Ruby squared innovation and the lower is the spread, ensemble spread. So uh, as you can see that uh, the simulation of Z, uh, which is the, like the red and the pink color experiment uh, for the analysis, you can see that the, uh, the arrow is larger than the no including radar compared to the black or blue. So for the forecast, the MDA shows general positive impact with the additional ZDA. So as you compare the, these two, the blue and the pink, uh, which one is including the radar, you can see that especially in the later cycles, uh, the one with additional radar DA give you uh, smaller, significantly smaller forecast error compared to the blue one here. Uh, for the wing, the MDA radar shows significantly a uh, looser fit of the wind analysis com uh, compared to others. So the pink one shows the, uh, the, uh, the loosest fit to the observation for the analysis. In terms of forecast, like all uh, four experiments, they are, the difference not much uh, significant, not, many, uh, not very significant. And here is the temperature and the uh, humidity forecast. Again, you can see that uh, with the additional ZDA uh, will cause the significant loose fit uh, to the analysis to T in the MDA. Like the pink color one uh, shows larger analysis arrows when compared to the, uh, the one without, rate, uh, without including radar DA. The additional ZDA increased the T focused arrow as well. Uh, when you compare like uh, the MDA versus no radar, you can see that uh, the pink color has larger focused arrow than the blue. And when you compare the control radar with control no radar, you can see that the red color, uh, which is uh, including radar uh, data, will give you larger focused arrow compared to the black one. Here, uh, the most significant improvement of the MDA is actually shown for the uh, humidity forecast. As you can see, especially for the MDA with red uh, radar data, the forecast arrow is significantly smaller, uh, like in the, this is fifth cycle, this is significant. And in the later couple cycles, you can see the forecast arrow of this MDA with radar is much smaller compared to the other experiment. And here, what's shown here is the forecast performance of the four experiments uh, shown earlier here. So this is the 48-hour forecast Roman square innovation verification against the surface observation throughout uh, the 48 hours. Uh, oh, yeah, so I didn't. I forgot to mention this free forecast that we are verified here. Uh, here is actually from the uh, ensemble mean of the final analysis cycle. So it's a one deterministic fo uh, forecast that we are verifying. So here uh, you can see that uh, without, when we are uh, looking into the experiment without a uh, radar DA, which is conventional only, when we focus on the black line and the blue line, you can see that consistent uh, outperformance of the MDA, which is the blue line, uh, throughout the 48 hours is consistent uh, and uh, uh, shown for all variables. Uh, the, for the winds, the difference is not significant, but like for the surface pressure, temperature, and for the humidity, you can see that the blue line's forecast arrow is consistently smaller than the control uh, experiment throughout the 48 hour. But after we add the radar, additional radar data, you can see that uh, the, the outperformance of the MDA is not as significant as the conventional data only. As shown here in, for the PS, you can see that uh, the pink line, the MDA is uh, like degrade, uh, the performance degrade in the later cycles and for the temperature, uh, it's like didn't give you like the consistent outperformance compared to the control radar. 
it's kind of in certain period you got a uh, better performance, but in certain period uh, it's not as good as the control radar. Uh, but still, in the relative uh, relative humidity, the humidity prediction, we still see uh, some improvement of the MDA radar compared to uh, the control radar. Uh, some exception too. Uh, but like within the first 24 hours, we generally see that the MDA with radar is better. And here is the uh, verification against the sounding uh, for 24 hour forecast and 48 hour forecast. So um, I'd like to uh, point out that uh, when we are comparing the control and MDA without, with conventional data only, you can see that the, uh, the blue line has smaller uh, focused arrows uh, in all levels, throughout the whole, all levels compared to the black one. Uh, when we are comparing the uh, experiment with additional radar data, which is the red one and the pink one, we do still see that our performance of the uh, MBA compared to the red one, which is the control. The MDA tends to show smaller uh, focused arrow compared to the control one. Uh, although the difference is uh, not as significant as, it, uh, as the humidity in these two. These are like relatively, uh, the performance are relatively similar among the experiment. experiment. So the additional, uh, what's shown here is additional radar data is not necessarily uh, give you the benefit uh, when you are uh, verified with the conventional data. As you can see that the, the red one and pink one, uh, its arrow could be larger than the one that only assimilates uh, conventional data. Uh, in terms of the storm forecast, uh, these four experiments uh, still, we see some uh, in, uh, positive impact of the MDA with radar. Uh, the inclusion of the additional radar data is very significant as you compare uh, these two red and uh, pink color line with these uh, black and uh, blue line. You can see, especially in the first 12 hours, uh, it, the additional radar DA give you uh, positive great positive impact in terms of the verification of the storm. Uh, uh, but among the uh, MDA radar and control radar, uh, you can see that still uh, it shows some positive impact, uh, but it's pretty much limited to the first 12 hour. And uh, uh, it's more significant in the smaller threshold verification uh, compared to the 35 higher, like stronger storm verification. But uh, even though uh, with uh, this kind of score shown here, we can see uh, the uh, noticeable uh, improvement of the storm prediction uh, in the storm composite, in terms of the composite Z verification. Uh, what's shown here is the 12 hour forecast composite of the uh, observation, which is the MRMS. And this is the control radar experiment and MDA radar experiment. You can see that uh, the, the improvement of the uh, reducing the over forecast is significant uh, provided by the MDA radar compared to the control, which is more uh, consistent with the observation here. Uh, last. Uh, I'd like to present uh, the other uh, the other thing we noticed about our MDA. So here, uh, as we as what's shown earlier, we are showing the uh, deterministic fo uh, forecast uh, from the final analysis ensemble mean. So I want to uh, show the difference between the uh, deterministic forecast from the ensemble mean analysis versus the dis deterministic forecast of the single member here. So as what's shown earlier, uh, like for this is an example for the rel uh, relative humidity forecast, you see that uh, this is basically what's shown earlier uh, in the earlier. So you can see that the control radar 
uh, sometimes will outperform uh, the MDA uh, radar data uh, in certain time period. But if we are looking into, when we are looking into certain uh, like individual members, this is the uh, deterministic from the member one. You can see that actually the MDA's positive uh, positive benefit, uh, positive impact is more significant for this member instead of uh, when we uh, compared to when we are verifying. Uh, the ensemble mean forecast. Uh, the same thing is uh, shown for the uh, the verification against the sounding. As you can see, when we are verified uh, using the deterministic from the ensemble mean, the difference between the con uh, control and the MDA is not uh, very uh, significant. Uh, some uh, more significant in the humidity, but for the T or the wing, it's not. Uh, mostly is very similar between the control and MDA. But for this member one, we do see that consistent uh, positive impact of the MDA uh, throughout the whole uh, level. Uh, considering of that, then um, uh, we also did the MDA uh, look into the ensemble forecast which is the 40 ensemble forecast, uh, deterministic forecast. And then this is uh, simply, uh, this is another case. So this is May 28 uh, South Plan score line case uh, with conventional DA only, uh, but instead of uh, verified the, just the uh, single deterministic from the ensemble mean, we are uh, verifying all 40 members, then we take the uh, ensemble average of their performance. Uh, so this is the average uh, room square arrow uh, for different members. For MDA uh, is the blue and the control is the black. Uh, we do see that in terms of the ensemble forecast, uh, the MDA does show consistent outperformance uh, up to 24 hours uh, for like temperature and uh, uh, humidity. And here is the 12-hour the forecast ensemble average room square arrow against the sounding. Again, we do see the consistent outperformance of MDA over the control throughout the uh, most layers, but with some exception, like here. Um, also, for the uh, for the hourly presentation uh, forecast verification, this is the, again the neighborhood ETS calculated uh, with different threshold, uh, smaller, this is light rain, this is like uh, more heavy rain, uh, moderate rain here. We do see that uh, up to 24 hours, the MDA uh, shows significant outperformance, uh, especially for the light rain. Uh, I, uh, which represent the, the uh, precipitation area compared to the higher uh, higher threshold. But still, e even in the higher threshold, we can see the consistent outperformance of MDA over the uh, control experiment. Okay, so uh, this is the summary I have. Uh, for my presentation. So the GSI ba uh, based multi scale ENCAP capabilities are developed for the convection allowing FD3 land model aiming at improving the large scale environment for the storm scale forecast. Uh, the proposed MDA method uses the filtered background covariance with long localization lens for assimilation of conventional observation that samples synaptic to mesoscale perturbations. Uh, sensitivity experiment are performed to determine ideal filtering lens scales uh, that is sufficient to diminish the noise in the analysis and provide a uh, uh, better forecast. Uh, also, high dependent filtering lens is proposed and is, its impact is also examined with one-time upper air data assimilation. Uh, the benefit in the subsequent forecast show for up to 24 hours particularly in the humidity. Um, the RTPS process is also optimized accordingly for the MDA to restore only the large scale background perturbations, avoiding uh, reintroduction of the small scale noises. The MDA is examined within, uh, with a 12 hour hourly cycle update configuration for real cases. 
uh, in terms of the deterministic forecast from the final ensemble mean analysis. Consistent improvement of MDA can be found in prediction of most variable of up to 48 hours when only assimilating conventional data. When including the radar data, the benefit of the MDA is relatively limited on the storm prediction and the humidity forecast for a shorter lead time, which is basically within a 12 hour or the first six hour of the uh, reflectivity prediction. The positive impact of the MDA is found greater in the performance of individual ensemble members and the ensemble average instead of uh, compared to the uh, from the final ensemble mean analysis. Yeah, so uh, this is all I have. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, and thank you, Changchi, um, for a great presentation. Thank you. Um, so we'll take the next few minutes for questions. If anybody has one, please uh, use the hand raise and then um, unmute and ask. Or if you would prefer, you can put a question to the chat. Uh, yeah, sure. Hi, this is Liao Fan, and a great talk. And I have a quick question. Do you have any perturbations in your lateral boundary conditions? Um, in, uh, the perturbation in my left, yes, we are actually using the uh, perturb the lateral boundary condition as uh, what's shown here. Uh, the ensemble, both ensemble IC and LBC are from the uh, different members. So they are different for uh, individual members. How about free focus? As I know, ENKF does not have, um, G does, ENKF does not have, you know, uh, yes. focus so up free to. Free forecast, we are actually using the same uh, lateral boundary condition from the GFS for okay. all ensemble members. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, Ming. Hey, Chongqi, good talk. Uh, what the difference between ensemble mean and ensemble average? Oh, yeah. It's actually just how you verify it. <laughs> so uh, for the, like, for these uh, verification here, you simply just uh, perform a deterministic from the ensemble mean. So that's uh, one, single, uh, perform, uh, one single forecast. Then you calculate the Remy square error. But for the plot here in the last slide, uh, what's shown here is uh, for each member, I launch a forecast. So that's 40 member ensemble forecast. And I calculated the room square, uh, the, the room square score for each member, then take average at the time, along the time. So it's like the average of the score. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's like the general of the ensemble forecast. Do you have any idea why it's better than ensemble mean? Um, actually, I think uh, this kind of verification only consider uh, if you launch a deterministic from the ensemble mean analysis. Again, this is the ensemble average of the final analysis. So you somewhat like smooth the uh, smoothed all the field by taking the average and also with these uh, kind of uh, approach, you only consider the benefit of ENKF on updating on some of me. Not like the, the, the update of the perturbations are not considered with this kind of a, uh, verification. But if you launch the ensemble forecast, that would include the benefit of ENKF on the perturbation update too. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, so, so young. Yes, uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, I have a, I have several comments and questions, but I'll just, uh, start with one um so because i missed the first part of this talk i'm not sure if you mentioned that already but uh like how did you construct the initial ensemble here for the 40 members because you just uh, i don't think 
you had enough spin up time for this kind of verification because usually for the middle scale ensemble you need at least you know like a week of cycling to spin up uh, otherwise it's going to be totally just uh, basically just showing the the initial ensemble so like the, the configuration shown here uh, with the three uh, three hour, you mean it's not uh, sufficient enough? Right. So like uh, in terms of this the cycling, right? Mm -hmm. So you you need you know like if you go for like a like at least two to three weeks, then you will see you know like uh, the in terms of the 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 forecast error versus um, the ensemble spread then you can see that, you know, like a, how it is kind of a spun up, you know, gradually, you know, being spun up. Um, and I bet, you know, like a, it can take at least, you know, if you are going to cover the entire Konos domain, it can take at least, you know, like a three to five days to Ooh. spin up. So okay. like a, it's not really legitimate uh, to discuss, you know, like a, the forecast sensitivity to the, to the, uh, to whatever technique you are trying here, uh, like a, just to, you know, like a based on the on the first day or two, because that's basically, you know, like a, what you are seeing is the the spread or whatever in the initial ensemble. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so you can try, you know, like a, for a longer, you know, period of, of cycling, and then you can see that. And also, okay. you know, like, uh, so if I remember correctly, the the observation error for like an RH, for example, uh, is usually typically like around five to 10% at least. So within the observation errors, it's hard to say, you know, like it's a significantly better or worse because that's not how your DA system can resolve because, you know, like uh, you already, you know, give the, the observation error that much and the, if if this the the forecast is different like a uh, less than that like a uh, by by a smaller amount you know like a uh, the value is smaller than the observation error you specify then it's uh, hard to say it's it's really statistically significant and also you know like if you are going to say the significant significance uh, significance uh, you have to actually go through multiple cycles right so you know like you need some sort of statistics you know based on the on more samples. Yeah, and, it is actually in our plan to test more uh, cases to be able to conclude for a like consistent, consistent uh, positive impact of our method. Okay, and the, the my last uh, comment is like a uh, it sounds like a uh, you know like a uh, you treat all the small scale features as noise. Like, how can you, like, uh, figure if it is signal, uh, you know, I'm, I'm asking about the signal to noise ratio, right? I mean, even if it's a small scale, if you really want to smooth out all the small scale features, you can just rather use, like, a coarse resolution model grid, right? Then you don't need to worry about, the, like, a small scales uh, coming out of the, the model simulations. Yeah. So, like, uh, uh, you, oh, you ran the, the expensive three kilometer mesh. And then you just uh, filter out all the small scale features. Uh, you know, like it uh, sounds like a, you can actually um, filter and like a, accidentally you can uh, filter out the small scale features, right? Like at uh, the signals, especially with the strong gradient, like in uh, along the front. Yeah, uh, but the, I, uh, what I want to point out here is actually uh, even though we are using the common game that's constructed by the filter, the background, but uh, still uh, the, as I show here in this, uh, still what we update is actually the uh, full scale background. So with this, uh, which is corresponding to the uh, model resolution. So like here, this is actually the background perturbation we are updating is still full scale. So the small scale uh, information is still contained in the background. It's just the uh, the common game we're using is filtering. So we're not just like get rid of all the uh, small scale uh, signals. So this is uh, basically the difference between uh, what you say that if we're using larger scale, uh, I mean, no, a coarser, uh, coarser resolution model, then that's 
that would be uh, uh, like the uh, the one that's updated will be the large scale grid point. So it's actually different from our approach here. I see. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, there's not any more questions. It's so you don't after. get to down, please. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's just after two, so um, I think we can conclude there and just uh, say thank you very much for coming, everybody, and thank you to Changchi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, have a great day. Okay, well, um, I will um, edit this recording and then um, we'll post it. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what So Young was trying to do. I mean, I think it was more of a, I'm, I know, I'm, I'm not a scientist, so I should just shut up, but it sounded more like um, an instructor, not, an, not a question, an instructor yeah, guide. Um, but I'm sorry that that happened. That usually does not happen during these talks. Um, so good. You did a good job, Chi Chong. Thank you. Do I? So yeah, I don't have to like stay longer, right? No, 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 not at all. You're fine. I'm going to stop the recording now. And um, do, I, oh, uh, do I have to uh, provide my uh, uh, those slides? Um, no, I would hold on to them. We're just going to post this online. We're going to we're going to um, post the entire recording online. Cool. Thank you very That'll much. That'll be on the D.